from the secret files of Teletram 2. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the files of Teletran 2. It's been a while. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. Something else. What's whatever the Klingons are celebrating right now? Um, are you gonna say Shalom? <laughs> shalom. No, I was just going like sh- sh- something. Um, but um, Andy, we are doing ah, comics. me, yeah, talking comics. Wow, talking comics. Who knows? I, it does happen. I'm very tired from a very busy day, and uh, so my brain is running out of like fifteen parts per second. Um, you can get some endorphins going in your brain, Mikey. Yeah, maybe I'll hang out with Freddie Prince Jr. Spoilers for the Patreon show. Thank you, Andy. Yay! We're talking about the Ultimates. Fuck you. Volume one. We're not doing volume two. Volume because two I won't. <laughs> if you say volume two is worse than volume one? I've. Did you see how the issue six started? Yes, I did. Because it must be worse. And I remember because we're building up to the time he just... For some bizarre reason, Captain America attacks France. Yeah, yeah, but, good times. Uh, um, anyway, so... <laughs> so, uh, for the main show, guys, we are doing Transformers Shatter Glass issues three to five. Uh, that Ooh. wrapped up there about uh, late last month. Uh, by Danny Lore, arts by Guido Guidi, and colors by JPB. Um, and then for Patreon, we're talking about the first volume of the 2002 uh, Marvel reboot, The Ultimates. God damn, was it really 2002? 2002. One of the oh my God, 20 one, years ago. Yeah, uh, along with Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate X-Men, um, it really cannot be denied. It was highly, highly, highly influential. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, That's why I thought we should talk about it. Yeah. We still re- haven't really escaped it. No, no, we'll get into it, though. But it's strange that, in a way. But um, anyway, so first issue of Shattered Glass. Uh, we're just going to run through these three all in one. We're not going to break them down individually. Um, because yeah, because we've I, already talked about the Blur one anyway. So so the Blur, and we, I believe we talked, did, did we talk Megatron? Nope, we didn't do it. We only did the Blur one. Uh, okay. I, I thought we, we'd done two as well, but then I looked and was like, hang on. I don't yeah. think we did two. I never okay. read it. No, we didn't. Okay. So we'll work two into this as well because I, I have reread that recently. Um, essentially, issue two is about Starscream reconnecting with Megatron and trying to convince him to rejoin the, at the moment, underground battle against the Autobots. Um, Megatron is not really into this. He's hanging out in the ru- in the Sea of Rust because that's where everyone goes when something bad is going on. Uh, and we find out that in a flashback that um, Megatron turned on Optimus early enough in the days of the Senate. Uh, uh, he's actually the one responsible for Optimus's cracked uh, boob. Um, which he never gets fixed, which is interesting. No, no. It's kind of like that one tattoo you just, you never really wanted, but by God, you're going to wear it like a like a badge. Um, I was thinking more like Moby Dick, kind of <laughs> the Captain Ahab thing, but okay, that works too. Listen, I avoided saying boob tattoo. <laughs> That one boob tattoo you regret, but by God, you're going to expose it to the world. Um, I can't imagine again, many ladies get a boob tattoo because I imagine it would hurt like hell, right? I, I know a ton, but that's a different conversation. Yeah, um, also, I, again, I'm very tired, so I apologize for anything. Um, so anyway, we find out about the history of Orion and Megatron. Uh, essentially, that Megatron was protesting against the, the actions of the Senate. Orion was basically the one behind all those actions and was trying to convince Megatron to go along. He got Megatron out of prison, tried to sort of push his weight a little bit, and Megatron was having none of it, and eventually the two had a big falling out. Um, This ultimately reveals that um, Megatron and the Decepticons went to Earth to try and stop the Autobots from, you know, strip mining it, as they do. Um, And this culminated in the Decepticons being defeated on Earth, and Megatron essentially taking the fall for his men. He would hold everyone off while they escaped. Um, and ultimately, Megatron blames himself for what happened. Uh, the fall of Earth, the fall of Cybertron. Um, Starscream, however, manages to convince him to get involved. 
Um, partly because he explains that while Megatron sees it as a failure, everyone else saw it as their leader sacrificing himself for them. Uh, and partly because it turns out that Starscream's unique spark is now a repository for a key to reactivate a Titan. And if they do that, they've got a shot of winning this war. Um, issue three is from Starscream's perspective. And uh, it follows him and Megatron as they go to Gold City, which, of course, is where Goldbug is hanging out these days, and meet up with pirate radio station Soundwave, whose entire role is to basically give the Decepticons a bit of an upper, um, or at least, and also try to find ones that are, you know, working in secret. Um, we also get a flashback to Starscream's backstory. Uh, he used to work with Jetfire. Um, they were looking for funding for their science work on the Titans. Eventually, Jetfire fell in with the Autobots, and Starscream simply wasn't having it, and the two came to blows, and Starscream buggered off. Um... Meanwhile, while um, Megatron and Starscream are meeting with Soundwave, it turns out they're being spied on by Eject, and, and uh, Blaster shows up, and a big fight uh, kicks off. And uh, Megatron once again sacrifices himself, telling Starscream to make a run for it, and Starscream don't want to, but away he goes. And as he's making a run for it, he's taken down by Jetfire and Goldbug. Um, issues... Oh, no. Oh, no, indeed. Yeah, hello. Um, <laughs> yeah, hello, Goldbug. Yeah, hello. Um, issue four is mostly... So from the modern perspective, Starscream's been captured and Jetfire's been ordered by Goldbug to torture Starscream until he gives them the information about how to reactivate the Titan. Jetfire is a little eh about it. And he's trying to say it's because he thinks if they torture Starscream too much, he'll crack and they'll never get what they want. There's a wee bit of an undercurrent there of, I don't want to kill my ex. Um, I was going to say friend, but okay. We, there are no friends in comics, Andy. Oh, everyone has to be gay. Oh, no. Every, no, no. Everyone has to be dating. It doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, or whatever. Oh, no. You can never be single. They're, being single. Do you know what happens to single people in comics? They die. They die? Oh. Yeah. So, See, I just like saw in, them as friends. <laughs> just like in real life. Oh my god. People in, people in relationships hunt you down and stab you multiple times. Oh my god. Like that um what was that movie? Um about Jason. the one day where Is that that's just Jason though. Uh, like Jason the movie or Jason R. Jason? Yes. So what are you saying that every year, like on Valentine's Day or something, you open the door and Jason's just outside it with a knife saying, like, you're not dating anyone yet, Andy. I'm just saying that uh, you know, threats have been made against me in DMs from Jason. Well, Jason, uh, please kill Andy first. Um, oh, my God. Anyway. I mean, they were all against me. They weren't against you. I think if he's going to send you threats, uh, he'll send, he won't, like, direct them through me. He'll send them direct to you. No, Don't worry. he'll just send me the Godzilla theme. He'll ask you, why don't you like Shin? Fuck him. Damn, boy. He'll just send me the Nanora video. Nanora. 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 Dekita. Good song. So. But, and we also see, like, Goldbug, it turns out, is a, something of a mini powerhouse, manages to take down Skywarp and now Botter and all that. But the real meat of the story is a flashback showing Goldbug's degeneration into a paranoid lunatic because Optimus does not like him very much. And I assume there's a bit of a Napoleon complex going on as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, at least it, maybe not direct Napoleon complex, but he doesn't like being laughed at and being seen as a joke. Yeah. Even he's, though he is, <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's very much a case of like he see he sees himself as someone who's much bigger than he is, and yeah, one of the I, thing, one of the reasons he seems to chafe under Optimus is because Optimus is you know perfectly happy to remind him how small he is. It's almost like he's good Bumblebee, uh, but mm. everyone's treating him like shit for so long he's just kind of snapped. Mm. <laughs> is that an unfair um, way to look at it or do you think that's, no, that's, uh, that's, that's appropriate? like he started off with like just kind of a normal guy and then it's just like he's been starscreamed except he kind of reacted to it a lot more than starscream would yeah every everyone told him how shit he was every day everyone laughed at him haha you're so small prime's just keeping you around as like a little little baby doll robot thing he he mm. he and he's like no fuck you i'm not a joke fuck all of you <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. With his abnormally large gun. Um, yeah. Kind of that would make home... sense, I suppose, as well, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
but kind of driven home when um, the Decepticons make a, a move to save Starscream and uh, they send in the Insecticons and uh, Goldbug, Goldbug takes them apart. Hmm. Um, including Venom. Man. Yeah. Leave I did have a alone. question about that because uh, Megatron shown in that scene as well. Sorry, Prime was shown in that scene as well. He wasn't there though, was he? Was that an no, illusion? I think it was like he was just having a like a crazy person moment. Okay, because that mm. I mean we haven't gone into talking about the comics yet, but I was massively confused what that was meant to be. Yeah, uh, and then uh, Goldberg come back and says like either you get something out of him now or I'm just going to shoot him in the fucking face. Mm. Um. And Jet, we, last issue is from Jetfire's perspective, and uh, yeah, Jetfire. We get a bit of Jetfire's thoughts on the world. Like, ultimately, you have to be strong. You have to be strong in yourself and your conviction and your ideals and everything else. Um, and yeah, he doesn't want Goldbug to murder Starscream. Uh, again, he keeps on saying like, "No, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea." Um, Goldbug free Starscream, who heckles would be the right <laughs> word. That's fair. Heckles. Yeah, yeah. Heckles him, yes. And um, yeah, Goldbug don't take it well. No, no, he doesn't. No, Gold, Goldbug, uh, Gold, Gold, Goldbug just oh, sort of murders him. He takes it as well as uh, Transformers Prime Starscream does. Except yeah. he's allowed, Bumblebee's allowed to go further with it, obviously, because it's a comic. Yeah, and he just freaking murders Starscream. Um, quite badly. Um, Jetfire um, tries to fight him off, but it doesn't go well for him either. Um, and ultimately, the Decepticons come in. Megatron and the rest manage to drive Goldbug away, but he's unfortunately managed to get hold of the cold. Code Jetfire is having just a, like a big crisis. Like he he's just hates many things, mostly himself. He f- sees himself as being too weak for, for having not saved Starscream. Um, Megatron sort of kind of offers him to join their side uh, after. Assuming Jetfire had killed Starscream and trying to tackle him and murder him himself, but which is fair, um, which is fair. Um, but Megatron sort of tries to talk him over to join up, and Jetfire is not having it, and he essentially just takes Starscream's body and goes away and says, um, um, "They're they're going to have a memorial. They're going to set up a memorial, and they're going to retrieve a spark." And Jetfire just leaves and says, "Like." Um, if you're going to give Starscream a memorial, make sure it's dramatic. Um, and then we find out that uh, Goldbug Lieutenant Slicer, uh, who is actually just Slicer, which is a little confusing because Slicer is a Decepticon. Yeah, again, that was like, that was weird. Confused. Some people think that uh, I, I did check this. Some people think that's actually a an error, and it's supposed to be Wheeljack. Oh, and they just named it Slicer because it's in his colors. Okay, that would yeah, make sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. That, that's an editor out, thing that should have checked that. Yeah, um, and there's two editors on this, and that's slightly worrying. But, um, oh, I missed John. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, oh, John. Uh, yeah, John. It's, an easy, it's an easy mistake to miss, but it is a shame when something uh, like that slides through, definitely. Yeah. Just like if John had done it, just like, is it Slicer? Yes, but it's also Wheeljack. Dun, dun, dun. He's basically their version of Punch Counter Punch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Ultimately, it comes down to Slicer has been working for Ultra Magnus, who looks less skull-faced in this one. Um, oh, that, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Magnus is basically going to play everyone off everyone else. He said he thinks that Prowl and Optimus are going to be after the power of the Titans, and they are, you know, big deal. If, if, once Optimus makes his move, it's going to be a big thing. Goldbug is a small man who thinks he's a very large man, and... Magnus is not particularly afraid of him having the power of the Titans, but as we see at the end, uh, Goldbug is able to use the Starscream Spark to resurrect Metroplex. How? He just does. He just does. Um, due to We've seen leaks, and the leaks said that we're going to get another run of this. Oh, okay. So, right. this, is, this is set up, we're assuming, assuming IDW keeps the license and everything doesn't go to hell. Um... Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's the book. Um, so Danny Lore, again, a fresh writer there, brand new to the franchise. Um, I didn't see this book turning out the way it did. Okay, how did you think it was going to turn out? Kind of crap. Yes, yeah, I thought the same. And I thought, okay, everyone's going to basically just be the opposite of who they were. 
Uh, Megatron's going to be super nice. Starscream's going to be really in your face nice. Jetfire is going to be like, oh, science is shit and I'm on muscle. Uh, <laughs> Goldbug is just going to be Starscream. Yada, yada, yada. It didn't really play out that way, actually. It didn't, no. I actually thought the issues were going to be much more like um, IDW's revelations, where each issue was going to be basically a spotlight, because that's, mm. at least to me, how it was framed, yeah. uh, the issues were going to be, but it wasn't. There was actually a through narrative. Most of the, the issues, uh, issue two, uh, three, and four were primarily about Starscream. Uh, sorry, two and three were primarily about Starscream. Mm. Uh, and then the last two were obviously a bit more focused on the the toys that they came with. But uh, yeah. it, it, it still integrated well into the story. If you want to see how to do spotlights tying into a story poorly, unfortunately, Revelations is that this is a much better way mm. of doing a similar idea. Yeah. Um, two was interesting because it's ostensibly Megatron's issue, but it's more Starscream's perception of him in many ways. Starscream's the main character of this book, mm. of this series. Oh, absolutely. Easily. This is Starscream. Like, Starscream is easily, easily the true. Like, Starscream is more impor- important to Blur's issue than Blur is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Even um, though he's in four pages. Or so. he's, yeah. he's barely in it. He's barely yeah. in the issue. Um, But, like, I think the Megatron issue was the one that surprised me. Because I was, because when Fun Pub and Pete Sinclair and that lot did um star screen uh, uh shattered glass originally they basically went for what if sarah what if megatron was a super nice version of megatron who's basically yeah, what if he like was it. just optimus prime yeah basically yeah and here he's not he's still he's more idw more meets the eye-esque but without the without like the i feel bad for what i did he's just like he's kind of a a gruff me- he's still megatron Mm, yes. Like, what if you directed all those qualities to being the good? And, and honestly, he reminds me of Cyberverse more than anything else. Um, oh, without, okay. Without doing yeah. the bulk, without doing the, it will be war like bulk <laughs> stretch that I will never will never leave my mind. <laughs> so it's like, what happens if I don't do it? Then there will be war. Huh. <laughs> hmm, huh. Well, that's Why are you that's, a, that's a tad extreme, but okay, Megatron. <laughs> Uh, I wish he did that all the time. Every sentence was accompanied by <laughs> body flexes. But no. Um, I, I ended up really liking this take on Megatron. Mm, same. Was, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I, are we just talking about issue two or are we talking yeah. about Megatron specifically? Mega, we'll, we'll do general. We'll do general. General on Megatron. Yeah, I, I thought Megatron's character was good. Uh, he's a lot more self-sacrificing, obviously. That's one mm. of the more key elements that he has. Um, would is he more self-sacrificing than Prime, or is it because the he's in more situations where he has to self-sacrifice? Because at least two times, uh, first where he nearly dies uh, mm. on, on Earth, and it's like, no, I'll go, I'll hold him off, and then in the bar where he, I guess, gets captured or was about to get captured, he tells Starscream mm. to to leave again. So he's much more willing to throw himself into uh, martyrdom, I suppose. I think one one way to look at it. Rarely in the fiction is Prime on the losing side. Oh, yeah. Whereas Megatron here is always on the losing side. Yeah. Kind of. I kind of think that this was a lot more interesting than a lot of Transformers stuff we've seen in, in a while. <laughs> because it was the. Uh, we've, we, yeah. have seen this, we have seen this take before. You know, Beast Machines is a good example of our main protagonists are on a massively sloping scale against the enemy forces mm. massively overwhelmed and that's what the decepticons are here they are massively outnumbered and underpowered compared to the autobots and that does make a compelling story because how do you fight against that and how mm. uh, how mm. do you how does how do your characters suffer loss after loss after loss rather than you know which way you used to and which kid shows kind of need to usually stay more into the safe zone of where your characters are always winning Mm. And they're not in peril, dan- uh, mor- uh, peril danger, perilous danger all the time. Uh, so th- yeah, this is this is a lot more intriguing, at least from from my perspective in that aspect. Mm. Um, but Megatron does kill people. No, oh, yeah, you know he squishes a dude's head and then throws his body at Starscream to cut him in half. It's a it's it's not a massive issue I have with the thing, but I think I think they kill off a few too many characters a little bit too. Yeah, Marvel movie-ish, basically, yeah. where, oh, we could just kill them, it doesn't matter. It's like, I think you should maybe have, in- if you wanted to, have them severely injured, don't be so willing to kill them off unless they're, like, 
you know, background Gubbins who doesn't it, even It has that slightly, we know this is not going to be an ongoing vibe. Yeah, so we can kill who we like. Ex- ex- yeah, ex- and like, all they have to do is, okay, we need these five characters have to stay alive for the whole run because their toys are relevant. And yes, for exactly. the next slot, presumably it'll be five more issues and these five characters have to stay alive because of their toys. And we yeah. can kill off anyone else. I do feel that um, the conflict on Earth generally in the series, it, which is introduced in this issue, mm. is not well handled. It's mm. briefly mentioned. Um, we assume that Earth was plundered by the Autobots? Yeah, it's... Uh, when I say, like, uh, we're assuming that when when it when it was, like, the Decepticons lost, then the Autobots took... Wait, basically, strip mine does. Yeah, now, but what could have stinted, happened? Is, I guess. Yeah, they could have just left, and then basically, like, we took you out, Cybertron's ours. Yeah. Yeah, that, is, that's why I, was, I wasn't entirely sure on, because, like, logically, you would think they'd strip mine the planet because Megatron states... Mm. The, there's energy undetected on Earth. It's a it's a staple, you know. Uh, but it, it, I, I don't know when when it's kind of brought up again. Like, I think when Starscream's talking to Megatron about it or something like that. Mm. I never got the the hard like uh, feeling that 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 was the decision that was made by the Autobots. It felt like like you said, maybe they just beat Megatron and went back home, which seems like a weird thing to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just one of those things where like. I feel like these kind of elements were, oh, um, we're we're going to add a bit of depth, but it's not a focus, so we're not spending time with them. It's like it's not it's it's peppered for flavor. It's almost things. like I don't know. I think I don't think we even had to go to Earth. I think Earth was put in there because it's Transformers. If you yeah. just had this conflict where Megatron sacrifices himself and uh, lets lets the Decepticons get away, and it's not set on Earth. It wouldn't have mattered. You yeah, could have like, just had this done somewhere on Cyber. Do it in, in Kaon City or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, I don't know. the thing is, Earth only matters because there are characters on there for them to interact with. Yes. And without well, a human character in there. And like, it, that it, is, it, that, like, Earth stories only matter because of the human element. Like, even, like, Cyberverse, I was very, I, I was more happy with season two than some. But, like, mm. the Earth aspect of it did not matter. They could no, have been I, anywhere. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's not so much for me, the Earth characters. I, I feel that we have to have it set on Earth so that we as uh, stupid humans mm. can relate to it. Because if it's not set on Earth, we can't go, oh, it's on Earth. It matters to us. <laughs> you know, that's why I, li- I like um, the stories that don't focus on Earth, because it, to me, it doesn't matter where the story set as long as it's interesting. Uh, that's the main thing. And yeah, you can do absolutely. more stuff. Uh, than it just being set on Earth because it's like, oh, well, there's a there's a dam or there's, you know, the desert or something like that. You do it on an alien world. It could be anything. It could be floating cloud people or something. I don't know. Megatron yeah. squeezing them for Energon. Squeeze like the clouds. <laughs> you yeah. can't defeat us, Megatron. We're liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Put um, them in the microwave sound wave. Mm. Um, but yeah. Also, I want to talk about Orion or Optimus for a sec because we never see him on screen, so to speak. He's always in flashback. That's true. And, yeah. Which means we only we've never seen him. We've seen Megatron's perspective on him, and we've seen Goldbugs. Mm. Um, and I find it interesting. Like he comes across as like sarcastically charming. Hmm. Um, well, yeah, he's he's kind of phrased as a war hero, isn't he? So I suppose that's yeah. that's part of his character, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and like he's, I found the interaction with Megatron quite interesting because it it came across as like that abusive friend that you, you who's been in your life for a long time and you're just so sick of him, Andy. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, now which one of us? That's the question. Both. Um, it's both of us. We're both Optimus Prime. <laughs> oh no. Um, and then you see him from Goldberg's perspective, and it's the you know the dismissive tyrant. Mm. So I found that really interesting. Um, Did you think the friendship? was at least well established because I don't know how these two could have been friends ever. Yeah, it's one of those things where I thought the interaction felt natural. But yes. then you think about it a bit and like you didn't set up how these two started hanging out. Yeah. Because and granted there's no time to do it, but it it does make you go, how? How is this a thing? Yeah, and like especially since at this stage like Megatron and him have already had some sort of falling out. Hmm. And like, but it's because like Optimus is coming across as like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. Thank you, Optimus, for getting me out of prison. 
despite all the trouble we've had with each other lately. No, 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 need to thank me, Megatron. That kind of reaction. Mm, mm. And Megatron's just like, I don't want to talk to you. Fuck off. Um, it's, it's, I don't know. It's like, let me use an incredibly extreme example, Mikey. Your mm. story begins with you being released from jail uh, mm. because Hitler decided to let you out because you were you were protesting the treatment of the Jews. And everyone's <laughs> like, how how is Mikey friends with Hitler? <laughs> How did that happen? Like and so. it's like, ah, we were just good buddies. When? <laughs> when were you and Hitler good friends? And when about did you go, I don't know, Hitler? Hitler, Something... buddy, you're taking it a bit far now. <laughs> um, I don't think we could be buddies anymore. Let me punch you in the boob and crack it. Uh, well, to be fair, if you crack Hitler's boob and you wore it like a badge of honor for the next however many years, I'd be impressed. <laughs> I have crushed the boob of Hitler. Like that one, maybe... um, that one game where one of the missions was shoot, where like you have to assassinate Hitler and you got extra points if you shot him in the testicles. Oh, what was that game? I don't remember, but it had really good like you, you it, when you hit someone in the eye or something, you'd see like yeah, you know, the skull people. shadow, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But there was a mission where you had to kill Hitler, but you got points for hitting him in the testicle. Yeah, fun but, times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what if, like since we said he is kind of the main guy in this. What about Starscream? Oh, he's uh, he's. I, I was surprised. Like I usually don't care for Starscream because he's a piece of shit. But it's like, oh wow, <laughs> he's he's uh he's that charming guy who's actually who actually is kind of charming and nice and endearing. And he's got he's not a perfect character either. He's got the uh the the complex of not wanting to be alone. Mm. And feeling bad because he's so loyal to Megatron, he's willing to follow the orders, even though it might not really be the right situation. Like when he's he's told to run away, and it's like, why why did I why did I leave him? Why did I why did I do exactly what he told me to do? It's like, oh man, that's a it's it is technically a character flaw that he yeah. is too loyal, and he will do even even though maybe it's something he shouldn't have done, and yeah. then he also regrets it and hates himself for it as well. Mm. And also, like he has no filter. Yeah, yeah. Like he will, he is so cocky and sure of himself in the in a charming way mm. that he will say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And like he could not stop egging, but Goldbug. Yes, and and not kind. I, it feels like kind of like what Hot Rod from More Than Meets the Eye was trying to do, but for me, never got there. He mm. was just annoying from my perspective. Starscream in this feels like I, what I was meant to feel. Young and brash, Rod. but like yeah. you, you like him, but you don't necessarily think he's making the right call every time. Agreed, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the hot rod though, at that at that stage, you were supposed to think, no, no, he's he is the wrong person in charge. It was after season one they kind of tried to turn it around to like, mm. ah, ultimately you like him, and I'm just like, ah, he's still a prick. Like the even though we don't see a lot of him here, it feels like Starstream <laughs> could be like a legitimately good leader. Mm, mm. Oh, definitely, definitely. Like he has charisma and he has like you know the loyalty he cares about people yeah he's got the passion and he's smart as well he's you know he's inventive he's um and clearly he'll do no matter he'll do whatever he has to even if it is to risk his life like he he merged his spark with the titan which Mm -hmm. was okay whatever uh and and died um even you know after uh, he he died trying to help and still laughing in the face of danger kind of thing which is yeah absolutely I think yeah. an inter- like I'm going to keep doing this, comparing it to the original version, which was just a cartoon nice guy. You're just like, oh, oh I'm right. so charming and charisma. Ha 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 ha, Megatron, my friend. Ha ha ha. Yeah. I, comparing, it is so weird. I came into this with such expectations about who these characters would be. Same, yeah. Because they were really badly written for many years. <laughs> and like this I'll be honest like this and Gridman but this Gridman saved at least the designs this kind of saved the concept for me yeah yeah definitely um there's a lot more effort in here like you mm. said than just uh, it's the, the reverse character which is like ah, uh, that's the easy option and it's what you expect mm, uh, mm, unfortunately mm. this does not save Starscream's design for me I still no, think he, it looks bad visually. He is the most boring looking character in this. Um, 100%. Um, uh, but and like, for, as a character, much better. Yeah. And like the artists like are all, I, we haven't mentioned them, but like Dan Canna, Guido Guidi. Mm. Uh, who, yeah. Dan Canna and Guido Guidi. Like not bad guys to have drawing. Like <laughs> Guido, does, Guido made this guy look as good as anyone was going to make him. 
Yes, agreed, yeah. It's just like, the man can only work with what he's got. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I like, um, I'd say like of the, of the focus characters, I'd say Jetfire is the least interesting to me. Yeah, he had an interesting internal conflict, though. Mm. Yeah, no, it was it was just like he, whereas everyone else here feels proactive, Jetfire is kind of just reacting to the events in front of him. Now that is interesting, and I do like the uh, the take of them. Just like Jetfire is legitimately torn, not necessarily between Autobot and Decepticon, but between his own loyalties and his own ideals. Mm. Um. But, like, if you compare it to everyone else, everyone else here is very much, like, the take charge type in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Whereas Jetfire, even even Blur to a degree, whereas Jetfire is very much, like, the high-level the high level soldier. But he's... The, if Jetfire disappeared from the war, it would, have, it would have plowed on without anyone blinking kind of thing, you know? Mm, yeah. He'll do what he's told, and that's about it. He doesn't mm, want to which, go too far. Again, it's his character flaw. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if he was willing to stand up earlier, he wouldn't be in the situation he'd be in. Um, but he's also, I would say for me, he's one of the more boring ones just because he's just a black jet fire. Ah, you mean visually? Yes. Yeah, visually. Yeah. Um, ju- I just, I've never really liked the shatter glass take on jet fire as a design. Well, no, he's very much like Starscream. Starscream's a white Starscream, and Jetfire, like you say, is a black Jetfire, they, and they don't really do a huge amount with it. Oddly enough, they do a lot with Shockwave, and yet he's yeah. not in the fucking comic, and yet he's yeah. got a really, like, stupid G2 design. Yeah, and then it Yellow turns and out, blue. like, they, they, they emperorated him, except what they did was basically break his brain so he feels infinite sympathy. Do you know who he is? I imagine yeah. his character's Deanna Troy. <laughs> Oh no! Oh yes, that's why we don't get dialogue from him because he's just Deanna Troy. Oh no, that's so sad, isn't it? Yeah, he's just like <laughs> standing up there. I sense they're upset, Megatron. Really? Oh really? no, Will. What are you doing in my dreams, Will? <laughs> oh no! Oh God, no! <laughs> oh no, oh, Will. No. Oh no, Nemesis. <laughs> oh no, Nemesis. Remember Nemesis? What happened I to Nemesis? Do. It's not uh, the first time, though. No, it wouldn't be the last either. No, uh, many mm-hmm. times with the other Troy. Oh, oh dear, ah oh, dear. But like, um, again, like Shockwave is that that take on Shockwave is completely original. I, hmm. The last, I think, the last version of Shadowglass Shockwave was like he's super nice and an ambassador type. Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's like pushing the boat out to say hmm. uh, the, in the process instead of him becoming super logical. He becomes super emotional. It's it's the reverse, but it, it's more interesting than just him nice now. Yeah. It's something I, it, that looks a little bit more guy. into the law. So that's mm. something at least. Yeah. Similarly, like Soundwave, they don't make him the joke. He's mm. he's just like he's a, he's not a deep character in this, but he is like more than just a gag. Um, yeah, I, I imagined, I, I don't know why, I imagined him to be kind of Robin Williamsy in what's mm. what's the movie where he uh, is Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah, Good Morning Vietnam, and then he also seems to maybe suffer uh, a lot from doing it, which Robin Williams clearly was a man that suffered a lot uh, in his life with depression, and maybe that's some, mm. an aspect of Soundwave's character yeah, as well. But instead be. of just depression with him, it's just being overworked constantly. Mm, mm, mm. Um, and weirdly enough, Goldbug really worked for me in this. Same, yeah, really interesting character, yeah. Yeah, and I... The, mean too. <laughs> the, yeah, very like very unpleasant. But like Dan can has take, especially Dan's uh, take and his design. Like for the version of Goldbug, I'm least excited about because it's the le- most boring color scheme. Again, I think he made it work. Uh, and it's it's not the most boring color scheme. It's just the most boring that Hasbro decided to put on yeah, this toy because it could have it could have been much better with the yeah, previous um, the original version of Bumblebee mm, uh, Shag Glass. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a better way of putting it. But I I think <sighs> that. Like, in contrast to Jetfire, I think it, it looked really good visually. Yes, yeah. Um, in the comic. And, like, he's really interesting. He's, like... Does it make sense why he's called Goldbug, though? Um, because Optimus is a dick. No, but he named himself, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but... he's not... He's barely gold. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. okay. <laughs> I am Goldbug. Why? Um, My hands are gold. Okay. I were, you weren't gold before. Yes, no. no. Shut up. 
You look you look like this like bug bite guy. Shut up. <laughs> um, but like the idea of just taking taking Goldbug and making him some more like I um I was like Optimus's number two guy, and I found out he literally oh did not give a shit. Mm. Like I I survived because he had spare parts and he didn't have anything to do with them. Yeah. And then it just snowballs from there. And it's him constantly trying to prove that he matters. And that I am the, like, no, I'm, this is my city. Everyone's afraid of me here. Mm. And, like, you know full well, like, Optimus is not afraid of this guy. No, he doesn't care. Probably doesn't even register him. Yeah, like, Gold City is probably, like, its own thing. Be it for a, a reason we don't understand yet. Optimus is doing his own thing. And What's he they, doing? We don't, we don't know. Yeah. But if the day he decides to move on Gold City, like, Goldbug would not have lasted very long. Yeah, probably. Um, but, like, I like, I love to, like, he goes off on a rant, like, he's, when he's got Skywarp, and he's just like, I, it's my city, it's named after me, Optimus is, doesn't dare touch me. And Megatron sends, like, a lackey. And it's like, oh, I'm so cool. And then <laughs> his whole, his whole shtick is like, don't laugh at me. I'm not a joke. I'm serious. I'm mm. a big boy. This is my city. I made Respect. a I I made a giant. You didn't fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I like that take a lot. Same. I unique. It's different, yeah. Again, it's yeah. not just reverse bumblebee. Or Starscream, which was what he was in in uh, Fun Pub. He was yeah, just yeah. regular Starscream. Yeah. He, except he was Starscream and Hot Rod was Starscream and Ultra Magnus was Starscream. <laughs> <laughs> oh no um basically anyone who was like the the traitor type was starscream in that mm. but i guess it's easy to just do starscream yeah um but hey you could do like as you say a severe napoleon complex yeah it seems uh, like they kind of it went a little bit with that and then mm. added some extra bits too mm. and then also added like oh no like he's actually quite powerful <laughs> somehow he just is. Maybe like, his new body's really good, I guess. Maybe he, like, murdered Braun, and he's actually just put his head on Braun's body. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. And okay. it's like, I took the strength of tiny Braun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, I'd say we've... Ca- anything else you want to touch on these? Uh, on all of them? Yeah. Um, oh, God. Let's Let's see... What do you think of the idea of the the Titan being the 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 end goal? Um, it especially might it being us... Metroplex, which would be an evil version. Yeah. I guess. I mean, lazy, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. Because hey oh, how how are we milking the Titans in the last five years? Yeah, they really like the Titans. I maybe <laughs> it's a mandate from Hasbro, so we can oh, push the yeah. Titan class figures. I guess. I suppose. Hey, if this leads to like a shatter glass metro titan because that's what it would be oh! because i would just put a decepticon <laughs> sticker on that that's how you do it you get collectors yeah. club like the rest of them yeah metro titan finally yeah. and everyone's like no no it's shatter glass metroplex you shut okay your mouth. whatever whatever you, you don't know horrible mouth you don't uh, fucking know you don't know <laughs> this. <laughs> like this is metro titan and waving optimus prime this is a japanese school girl <laughs> And so is Megatron. This mm. is life now. <laughs> um, get a classic cliff jumper. This is an amnesiac boy who's actually a giant shank down into an amnesiac boy's body on the Fun internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think I. It's lazy enough for me just because I do feel it's a mandate thing. It's like, oh, use the all spark. Okay, mm. cool. Wake the I Titan. See, I'm, I'm happier it's a Titan rather mm. than the All Spark or you. Oh, God, yeah. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll take the Titan. Definitely. Um, yeah. I think of the options, it's the best one. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have preferred something original. Mm. And I feel yeah. like if you give Danny something to do, they could have done something original. But mandates are. I, this has a mandate vibe to it. In part, but it still came off well, thankfully. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, I think Danny did a great job overall in terms of like, because the whole Metroplex thing is tied into Starscream. Again, it's it's basically just part of that arc. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, it yeah. feels that we definitely need more to flush out the rest of the story because uh, I yeah. think this is a really good setup to the universe. 
Mm. Um, maybe again, like like we said earlier, the, I think the off too many characters is a little bit too willy nilly. Like Starscream, Skywarp, the Insecticons all go. Um, mm. I mentioned Skywarp. Yeah, uh, I think a few Autobots get offed as well. Yeah, uh, they're, they're a little bit too gun happy with the kills uh, for my liking. But it's not mm. a massive issue because, like you say, Mikey, it's not going to be an ongoing. So I guess they can kind of do what they want and like you said there's probably a thing of oh but hasbro doesn't care these guys are gonna die it's fine yeah it, we're not gonna make toys of them so who cares yeah act i i definitely think which is weird because i thought they might have done a sky and a thundercracker i wouldn't have been shocked but then yeah. again like i could also see like collector's club they want to keep it like one mold per kind of thing maybe yeah maybe yeah mm. maybe like you say they they want to keep it um streamlined i guess mm. which just because like i while i could see them doing a skywarp or a thundercracker comic i could see that being like people would probably get a little annoyed it was like collector's club three <laughs> more seekers yeah well i mean some people really <laughs> like collecting all the seekers but the, i i guess that's more the g1 seekers maybe like mm. you say giving them the action master thundercracker uh color scheme wouldn't sell as well they're wrong wouldn't. for it but. yeah you you and me fighting they're just like no take our money Actually, I don't know I would, because it would be the Cybertron version True. of, of well, Cy- uh, the Siege version, sorry. Could, oh, mm-hmm. But they could do, like, the, the Earth version from the flashbacks. I, I don't think they would. It'd be nice if they did, because it looks like the better toy. But They could. Also, uh, Skywarp's um, um, color scheme in this, uh, also a little bit shitty, I will say. Mm. Like, I would black say and blue, and that's some it. Some of the original color schemes here were not great. No, it would have been nice to maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the idea was they didn't want to change what people knew as the shag glass stuff, mm-hmm. glass stuff. But I think maybe not changing them uh, like completely, but incorporating additional colors into the color schemes to make them pop a bit more. So you yeah, could still have yeah. Starscream with the red and the the white, but maybe I, I don't. I'm not a color theorist kind of. Mm. We need Diamuch on this. Uh, we we add like one extra color in there to mm. like uh, give them some pop. Because, I mean, Starscream's uh, three colors anyway, isn't he? He's white, yeah. uh, creamy, grayish, white, blue, and red. Yeah. Um, I, I always... With yellow, so you I, can I, do that I, here. Yeah. I always thought, like, okay, he's based off Jetfire. I get the idea. But the problem sure, is it's yeah. just his normal color scheme without blue and a worse spread. Yeah. And it's um, like Jetfire toy, which is the Macross toy. Like, yeah. even in, like, Skyfire, who this is... It's clearly the Skyfire design we're going for these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just white. There's a bit of red in there. There's a bit of blue in there. Uh, not much granted. He is primarily white. But, again... Yeah. It does, I, it just, it's Starscream. Add a bit more flair. He's meant to be a very flamboyant character in this and charming. Mm-hmm. And, like... Wine red. I always thought, like, doing, like reference color scheme for the shattered glass wasn't a wise thing not for no. all, like shattered like action master well i liked because it gave us an action master classics choice <laughs> but like in and of itself i never really loved the idea because like especially when you got into the guys who never got toys like um uh, like uh the, the the devastator is just um like uh compu uh defense or colors or something yeah. like that or yeah. like, oh yeah, or like um, the Terracons, Abominus is uh, Computron colors. That that's something I don't like. No, um, agreed. Yeah, and like I, especially since like the two flagship characters have original color schemes. Mm. So and like Goldberg's a bit different. Rodimus was very different. Grimlock, oh, Grimlock was the first one where I was like, eh, it's just Tripticon Grimlock. Was... Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, cool. I suppose, but um. Yeah. Before we go, I'm going to check the leak list for who was the next. Uh... Oh, the other comics are coming out with toys. I suppose that makes sense. I don't yeah, know why I'm shocked by that. Same thing, Collector's Club. So, uh, okay, so according to the leak list, mm. it would be um, Wheeljack. Soundwave. Oh, Slicer. Okay. Slicer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Soundwave. That would make sense. Will he come with a bandana? If not, what's the point? Yeah, that is one thing Fun Pub really did right. They gave him a bandana. Please give yeah. him a bandana. And um, in this comic, he was shown with said bandana as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, please. You know. uh, Blaster. 
Um, I think his color scheme is actually pretty neat. That's okay. Hmm. And Ultra Magnus. No, Ultra Magnus does make sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it's Diaclone, so it's like, yeah. okay, that's a, that's a neat color scheme. Though it feels like we've already seen that, but I, I, I think it's just how many Ultra Magnus he's Magni. Yeah, he's at yeah, this yeah. Point. I'd actually maybe be interested in uh, the, the, the Blaster, because he's. Yeah. I really do like that color scheme. Mm, but I again, like hmm. I don't think it would happen, because they're so rare, but it would be nice to get some retooled heads, like we did for Blur, and like mm. we did for the one part for the uh, jet fire. Yeah. I definitely yeah, yeah, think yeah. we need a few more. F I know it's they don't want to do it because it's extra cost and whatnot. But I definitely think adding a bit more character by giving them different face sculpts would definitely set them apart as just being a repaint and it'd be a bit more uh, value to it. At least in yeah, my no, eyes. I'd, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. You could even just give them basic sneers if you want to do that for the Autobots, but... Just look at you all the time. You're like, yeah. Yeah, especially um, uh, Blaster. Blaster would go with a good mm -hmm. sneer. Soundwave, you can't really sneer him because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need face plates like Soundwave. You can maybe bug his eyes out a bit, like he's like got one big eye and one slightly smaller eye by squiffing the um the visor on him. That, that feels very t like '90s TMNT toy. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, give him the give him the the weird gurn. Or I used to. <laughs> Like one of my oldest shames. I used to try and do that face. Why? Because I was I wanted to be a turtle. Oh, oh! I thought you just meant like at school. Yeah. Oh. So I'd be running around what playground. Age? Oh God, eight or nine. Okay, so not middle school. That's okay. I thought no, you meant I like, like middle 18. school or high school. It's like ooh, eighteen. Dear. Um, so I was oh. just running around doing like the nineties <laughs> yeah. turtle toy face. You know, I'm trying to talk like that, which is not easy. <laughs> I'm doing it now and i was just like jesus christ um but yeah anyway andy i think yes. that's enough how do we rate this surprising book uh are we rating it out of 10 as always i think it's fair we can't give it i don't feel like giving it its own scheme that's fair i would give it a good solid eight i really enjoyed it um i'd like more world fl uh, to be flushed out uh i mentioned my uh, issues with killing off people here and there and everywhere Mm. Uh, but I was really involved with the story. I, w I was actually reading it and surprised how much I enjoyed it. I was like, wow, this is this is what it's like to read a nice, engaging Transformers comic. <laughs> I was shocked it didn't drop the ball after the first issue because we were really kind of like, oh, this could... We were, we were happy with the Blur one, but I was like, okay, you know, we'll see how it goes. And it, mm. it went well. I'm, I'm mm. very happy with it. Yeah, um, I, I echo eight. A very solid eight out of ten, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I think Danny Lore made a very good first impression on very the good, franchise. Very surprisingly. Um, to the point where I believe they're writing the Champions book for Marvel. And my whole Marvel frustration, I just to see if this was just a Transformers thing or if the, the writing stood up, I'd be mm. tempted to start picking up a couple of those, see how, see how they write oh, those. But okay. um, I think... I always say this about new writers. The important thing is like whether or not I want them back. And I would like Danny to have another shot. Yeah, maybe get them back on for um, uh, the rest of the Shattered Glass stuff. So yeah. the, the vision is consistent. The vision is consistent. Yep. Um, That'd be nice. Any other like openings for maybe short stories? I'm like everyone always goes, your your new favorite writer. Oh, give him an ongoing. Not everyone can do an ongoing. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. So not everyone is John Barber with his crazy board. Um, yeah. And there was the benefit of uh, older IDW uh, not doing an ongoing, but breaking their main mm, ongoing mm, story mm. into chapters, into short yeah. things. That that had its benefits. Yeah. It had its so, downfalls as well. But, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. So hopefully this is one thing, like whatever's going on with IDW in the next year or so, hopefully like we are getting some more books from this from Danny and mm. they get to continue their work here because I was really impressed. Yeah, same. Me likey. Yeah. And like good art. I can't say anything about it. Dan Cannon and Guido Guidi. We've talked about them many times in the past. Yes, it's obviously not consistent because it's very different art styles, but yep. they're both good quality ones, which I, I enjoyed. And they weren't like so divergent from each other, but it is it mm. is noticeable when it does jump yeah, between them. Especially Guido stuff, I always find. Like Guido, Guido has quite a soft facial. Faces on Guido stuff is always leaning towards soft, in my opinion. Hmm. Not in like, a bad uh, way, obviously. Oh, no, no. God, like, Guido's amazing. But I'm like, yeah. I'm looking at some of Dan's um, previous work. Like, he did a fun pub one of, like, Bacon Razorclaw. And it's like, that art is insane. <laughs> um, I like, really well done in the colors as well. JPB, I think, did a good job keeping them consistent. 
Yes, I would agree. Yep. Um, also, get well soon, John Paul Bove. He's ha- been having a bit of a rough time of it recently. Uh, so sorry to hear that. Um, a few medical issues. Of it. Has, he's been updating on Facebook. If anyone wants to keep track of him, it sounds like mm-hmm. he's on the mend. Um, and he stopped trying to uh, get people to steal his child because he's saying nice things about his son, who I remember him trying to get rid of at a TF Nation. That doesn't mean he's still not trying to get rid of his child. It just means he's proud of uh, the child. <laughs> you have done well, child. Now leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but JPB, you're a lovely man if you if you hear this. Uh, so keep keep up the good work of being fantastic. Hmm. Um, also, send me free art. I like free stuff. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. And there wasn't much to say about the letters. They were about Neil Yuitaki again and David Mariotti and Riley Farmer were the editors. All I'll say there is there were some definite misses here that feel like editorial mistakes. That glaring one is Slicer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That feels just like an an unforced error. Um, and I have a weird relationship with David Mariotti as an editor. Um, like sometimes he can be quite solid, uh, but just like from the get go, he made such a bad impression with the Transformers versus Visionaries. Oh, that's the thing. Remember when he yeah. wrote that two page like spread at the end of issue one, screaming, "Cup is dead. He's never coming back." Oh yeah. <laughs> just like oh, that was a bad first impression, mate. He seems mm. nice on Twitter. I was like, he seems lovely. It's just like that was just one of those little errors. Just like it's such it's a small error, but in the context of this story. It's one of those things, like, it just stands out. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Anyway, anyway, guys, we would definitely recommend reading this. Pick it up. Give it a go. Support the creators. Um, if you're sticking around for Patreon, please do. We're going to listen to me die on on, on screen. Yay! Uh, die in your ears. It's like an ASMR, but full of pain. Yay! Um, uh, if not, guys, if you want to know what we think about the Ultimate Comics, if I haven't made it clear already, um, please support us on Patreon for two pounds a month or two dollars rather, and you get uh, the extended version of the comic show. You also get any interviews or anything else we're doing early. I am hopefully going to have an interview with the writer of King Grimlock uh, done in the next month or so. Nice. Um, so uh, that will go up, and you get any extra shows, and of course our woo woo, um, which will be sorted. We're, we're between my crazy schedule at the moment and Andy's crazy life in general. Um, we're bouncing we're around so badly. <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 a bit back and forth in our scheduling lately, as you may have yeah. noticed. But we're we're getting back in. We're getting back in. We're getting back in. Um, it'll just take a little while. But don't worry, we still love each other. Yay! I'm lying. He made oh. me see it. He has oh. my puppies. I do. <laughs> they are planning something, it seems. <laughs> but these ones definitely. Jesus. <laughs> he's, in the, he's in the back now, looking at me. Nope, There's no can't. in that in that photo you put on Facebook of them looking at you through the window. <laughs> there was no love in their eyes. No, he was just like, "Hello, Clarice." <laughs> no, he stepped in on his uh, planning. Okay. Ah. Your timing was poor. <laughs> Your end will come quicker than intended. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, and if you want to send us any feedback or anything, guys, the email address is moonbase2 at gmail.com. On Twitter, it's moonbase2. If you want to send me anything, it's Irish Paleo on Twitter. Andy, what about you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube as Decayed Andy and on Twitter as Decayed Andy as well. Mm. I stream and whatnot. You did. Uh, Super Robot Roars last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fixed again. Uh, the game's fixed, so it's not buggered like it was last time I tried to play it before Christmas. Yeah, so I saw nice. that. That, that. That sounded awkward. Um, it was. It mm, was. So, um, watch that, and you can watch Andy basically squee over mecha stuff and complain about other mecha stuff. That will mean nothing to any of you except me. Yay! <laughs> um, yeah, so, guys, if you're sticking around for Patreon, we'll see you in a second. Otherwise, talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah.